Hello there, it's Neil from the Record Office and today we're out and about and we're going to be cooking with quinces a late 16th century recipe from one of our archive items at the Record Office. <laughs> Hello there, so Neil here, uh, hopefully cooking um, some quinces up to a recipe from a document that's in our collection, which is D-stroke DBYZ1. Uh, and if you follow all the way to the end of this um, program, we have a PDF for you, which you can download and have a go yourself. So we think this recipe is from around 1575, and it's just labeled uh, to preserve quinces. And it starts off, let your quinces be gathered when they are yellow all over, and they are certainly lovely in yellow today. Um, and the recipe tells us that the smooth and flat quince in the crown is the best. So, well, we've got two here, and they're, they're quite flat, looking lovely. Um, and then first we're going to core our quinces, and then pair them, or skin them. Um, now, something that we're just struggling with is the next bit is to preserve six pounds of quince, take six pounds of sugar. Um, and a proportion of that sugar is to be musk sugar or raw or unrefined sugar. So that's for one pound of fruit, one pound of sugar. So that's a lot of sugar to fruit. So we're just doing a small amount today uh, and we're making up um, how much water we put in because the recipe like so many of these early modern recipes you know there's an assumed amount of knowledge going on um, or rather perhaps even these recipes aren't to be shared but just as an aid memoir for, for, for the individual who's written it from one year to the other but we've got no in, uh, idea of how much water so we're going to do three to one uh, water to sugar to get the sugar syrup um, it does ask to have some uh, damask rose water in the uh, the water mix but um, I haven't got any of that and I'm not very keen on it actually to get that sort of um, Turkish delight favour so we're, we're going really for the for the the, the the quince essence of quince so I've managed to wrangle the uh, the quinces um, and we've cored them and they're very hard fruits and they're really difficult to deal with and uh, normally when I cook them I'll, I'll I'll sort of chop them up into halves and quarters before I core them. But the instructions from the recipe tells us that the, the, um, the, the quinces need to lie either with the top or the stalk downward, not lying on its side like that. So by cutting them flat along the bottom and coring them, at least they will sit, sit flat, although they're probably going to float. So um, mm, we, we see how we get on with that. Um, so they're not to lie on the side and we should always be pouring the syrup upon them. Although I think that we're not going to worry, be worried about that because our three to one water to sugar uh, mix looks like there's enough volume for them to sit in there and be completely covered. Um, by skinning and coring them, we lost some weight. Uh, so that's why we've actually got three quinces, which are just weighing slightly over two pounds. So. Uh, we're just waiting now for the syrup to come up to the boil. I'm just going to pop these in some uh, water with some lemon in them to stop the uh, stop them going brown, although the brown of the sugar is going to make them go brown. So we're seething, boiling very nicely, although there doesn't appear to be anything to skim off, um, no scum. And it could be that obviously modern sugar is quite well refined, unlike sugar 400 years ago that probably would have had lots of impurities and bits in it. So, so far, we haven't had to skim anything, and uh, we're just about to put the quinces in, so bear with me. Now, I've had these in some acidified water just to try and prevent some browning, but as you can see, they have browned quite considerably, but they're gonna get browner because they're going in the very, um, very brown liquor. Oh, look, uh, oh, and it's gone upside down straight away, capsized, turned turtle, so this is, I think, how we're gonna how we're going to um, cook them in that case then, that's if they're comfortable like that. Now obviously the recipe called for it to be, or for them to be basted. Well, I mean at this stage we're not going to have to baste them, so it could be that we've put too much water in the three to one, maybe we should have done two to one, but we'll see. Anyway, we'll bring these back up to the boil and see whether we need to do any skimming. Right, so 
looks like we've got some scum which we can skim off as directed so that's the next thing okay so the recipe says that when the quinces are half sodden um, we put in some cinnamon to half an ounce for obviously for the full amount but this is quite a lot smaller than half an ounce it's not exact so we're just going to stick in this bit of cinnamon stick uh, and see uh, what that does and also um, how that disintegrates in the uh, if it does in the liquor um, here goes While this has been going on, Ed and I have been chatting about how much we might need to reduce the, the, the sugar syrupy stuff, uh, and then seeing that the quinces are starting to become well sodden, um, but disintegrate. So we're wondering actually whether we let the fruit disintegrate, um, and actually then what we will end up with is, is a sort of a type of jelly or stroke jam. So I think we initially thought that we'd, there'd be big lumps of quince or half quinces or what have you in a jar. But the fact that it, at the end, the instruction says, now put them in galley pots, which are small little earthenware pots. Well, we couldn't get those in, uh, those big lumps of quince into a small pot. So yeah, so we're gonna try that. But the main thing is we're having a go and we'd like you to have a go perhaps and see how you find this uh, recipe and how successful you uh, have, uh, what success that you have with it. So anyway, we we'll watch this space. Quince is in. This is the last bit. I'm going to try the juice before any sugar's added and before the fermentation. It's surprisingly sweet, but nevertheless, it's slightly sour, but not as bad as I thought. Oh, it tastes lovely. I say it tastes a little, well, it tastes really quincey, mm, which you would um, expect. So here's the lovely sample. So, having got the sample wine from the demijohn into the hydrometer jar, we can put the hydrometer in, uh, which has a scale at it, which will measure uh, the specific gravity. So we did that when we first put the yeast in to find out how much sugar was in the uh, in the wort before we started it um, uh, going uh, with the yeast and now we are going to see how much of that sugar remains uh, and how much has been turned into alcohol so we just pop that in give it a little twiddle because sometimes you get bubbles on the hydrometer and then so now I'm going to try uh, probably very inaccurately to measure off the scale so bear with me a moment while I faff around here. For our American audience, that's one of the things I'm trying to encourage the use of the word faff. Because I believe it's not known out there. Oh, so it looks like it is about 54, I'd say. Bear with me while I now consult my chart. So, having consulted the chart and Edward, now bearing in mind that neither of us are mathematicians, that's why we did history, uh, we think it's around about 10% alcohol by volume. 
So, you know, a, a nice amount of alcohol, but still quite sweet. And this will probably make a nice uh, sort of dessert style wine, a Saturn style wine. So anyway, next thing will be bottling. So, we have six bottles of wine, uh, all ready to be uh, drunk, hopefully at some point. Um, we probably let the staff loose on this to see what they think, and then we can tell you all about it. Um, there will be a copy of the recipe for you to have a go as well from our historic collection. Um, so yeah, if you've got some quinces in the garden, why don't you make some quince uh, wine? At the moment, it looks like this might be more successful than the preserved quinces but more of that in due course. Take them off the fire a little before they be sodden. You shall know when they are sodden enough in taking of the syrup and let it drop upon a saucer and it will jelly if it be sodden enough. and then let them be put in galley pots. Well, I hope you enjoyed our film, uh, looking at quinces and how to preserve them and using some of our historic recipes. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed it over the last year. And um, yeah, it's, it's been a real success, certainly on the wine front. I'm not quite so sure about this, but you have a go. Um, and anyway, if you don't like quinces, um, they make excellent toys for dogs because they've got a really odd bounce. But there we go. There's all sorts of uses for the quince. Anyway, cheers. <laughs>